Hello everyone, a new lesson for today and as you may remember, we have this state on orosin. Oh, this one is the one that has the material. Wait, this is a spoiler. I don't want to add the material just yet. So let's uh, reduce the refraction and change the material inside. Nah, not yet. I was doing some tests for the material because it's a little bit complex and the colors uh, selections for the materials can be uh, hard to get sometimes. So let's keep working on the scene. We had, or I show you how to create the lights with normal lights around here. I need to change part of this that is the setup for the light settings. And we have this basic setup, right? But you can see here, it's the normal setup that we use to create these kind of images. And now we are going to see how to work with soft boxes. And one of the best uh, free examples are Oliver Wolfson soft boxes that you can download here, get the soft box and the umbrella soft box. You can even add a PyMail Python Py script that you will have to add the rigs. Just put softbox HDRI here and you're going to see the first uh, result and it's going to be Oliver Wilson. So you're going to access something like this. Let's see. Cook. And you're going to download the softbox. It's going to look like this. You get an HDRI. Let's put this one here. And this one here. And the umbrella also, you get the mask and the HDRI. So let's go back here and I will change the color itself for a file. And let's call the softbox HDRI. So let's open. And you can see that we have a new result that it's going to be raw. You need to put the color space always in raw. And let's control the intensity. And let's make this life visible just for a moment. And let's bring the light close to you for you to see how the likes looks around here. You can see that the texture is there and the softbox it's working. You can even put it on the back if you want to have a cleaner kind of result with a really really high density on the lights. And this way you can actually control how does this kind of work works. And just, you just need to be sure that you have the correct scale for the soft boxes. Remember that soft boxes can be quite big and you need to have the correct scale around them to achieve a better result or the result that you want at the end. So let's work with the reflections around here. And let's add on this one right connection wait why oh I think I broke it let's save as a new scene cook four and let's try to break the connection there's no connection from ramp out color to red figure light to disconnect what the heck how is that there is no connection physical light it's this one I want to delete that connection thank you that was weird so again we repeat the process we add a new one and let's add the umbrella for this one you have a mask for the umbrella if you don't want to have information there I'm not going to use the mask I'm just going to use the umbrella directly you're going to see how the light is going to change to yellow on this part 
and also you now control the density let's see if we put it on raw yeah it's on raw and the scale of the light it's on a square it needs to be further away remember that we have the aim so we can move our light with no problem and you can see how does it change a lot now that we have the texture there and it has a nice result i don't like too much the umbrella for these kind of bottles mostly because it does have some weird kind of of results there let's change to put some uh refraction so you can see the refraction there i actually make a little change on that material we need to remake the glass for you to see the result at a later stage and you can see how the render times also tend to be a little bit higher because we are mapping the textures and when you map a texture into the light normally you're going to receive a higher uh, density on the noise because you're going to have more information to project so you can see here that the reflections does work but they look a little bit weird and now if i want to diffuse the borders how can i achieve that well you can make it in another way you can actually change the way that the light works to reproduce how it should work uh, with a diffuser and the way to work to to do that or to work around that let's take the glass refraction off again let's show the object let's remove the color that was the technique with color right let's put intensity of 10 and let's remove it put the volume why this light is giving me this error okay i will need to change the light again so light selected it's having some weird error there now let's put the color on white again and a value of 10 and let's reposition our light what i'm going to do now is to use a square boxes or a square lights more like rectangular lights around the edges let's have the full spectrum here like that so on this result here we do have a nice information but we need to add more of a fix let's put a value of two maybe five and a value of five also okay now we have information on the back maybe i can reduce the color of the plane to a little bit more of gray and to add just a minor anisotropics and roughness in the reflections i want to have a minor change over there I think I have IPR under sample. No, let's change to have some IPR under sampling just to make it faster. And let's see with the size that I have here. Let's save the scene. Let's change the size because I have been working on a really small scale there. So maybe 100 pixels and it's going to look the same. Let's see the scale. It's, yeah, what, 100 pixels. It's going to render faster, and the scale that I'm seeing here is almost the same. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is to create a plane. I'm going to create a massive plane, and I'm not going to reduce the amount of edges. You're going to see why. 
and let's put it on 90 degrees and I'm going to use this plane to block out the light so my light should be further away and the tissue that we have here that it's just as the diffuser that we had before it's going to select this part we add a thickness here the same process that we did for everything and we are going to create a softbox with a bevel a lot of segments because we want a nice section there maybe we will need to add these guys also so let's create a nice softbox I don't care if I have a triangle there or not I just want to have a nice kind of border around the softbox it looks good and what I'm going to do here is to create a new material it's going to be the diffuser or softbox whatever you want softbox and this material is going to be extremely com extremely simple not complex what I want to do here is just to put the material there and I'm going to do something for you to see did the little by type history if I change the color you can see that here we do have that basic reflection this is just the basic reflection of the plane but if I go around and use the backlight translucency and I start adding more information you can see here that the light it's starting to pass through my object you can see it now how the light works around my object there and what I'm going to do is for the weight I'm going to add a ramp but first I'm going to add a new V what I'm going to add it uh, create planner from the y-axis for to see it up front and now I'm going to create a ramp that it's going to be a tartan for the weight on the translucency I want the translucency to be less on the sides so let's create a ramp and let's go with a 6 here to see I'm not seeing it okay doesn't matter I can see it here I think well it's on the translucency so to be able to see it I will need to map it to the color so let's put it on the color should be around here well apparently not and I will use a tartan maybe four corner ramps why I'm not seeing any change here let's put a pause yeah it was because of that so let's put a tartan and now I can see it this is going to be the control that I have for the softbox maybe even a circular ramp can be better a better of a controller around here box no I think that the box is the best kind of result that I can achieve here and I can simulate how does the light works around the softbox to add the information to my actual final uh, shape here I want this part to be extremely white or perfect white and what I, it, this one it's going to do is to map the reflection here you can see now that the diffuser it's working great let's make this one smaller and you can see how the light looks so soft around the edges and now we have a value that can show me how the light works around the edge
if I take this one up or change this one let's render again you can see how the gradient around the edge changes if I take this one smaller you can see how we can change the gradient by changing how the translucency works around the plane so I'm going to change a bit how the reflection works around here and add a an smooth reflection here because I do want something like that Okay, maybe even less. I want it softer, to look softer. Exponential down, yeah, exponential down, it's a better way to control it. And now, what this one has as a magic for that is that if I want to control the intensity of the light, I can just put a nice intensity here, but it's going to affect me the back also. But to change it, I just need to use physical methods. Let's put an intensity of 20, it could be much. I can just change the position and the reflection is going to be on the same spot. I don't need to go to come here to change the intensity because of the square law and you can see the exact same reflection always so when you have the correct position for your box and you can change the reflection with only your box scaling or your box uh, angles if you want it softer on, on the back or just a more natural look you can control everything just by affecting the light itself and if you want to have a pointer light you can just change your scale make a smaller light and use use the, the small light as a full diffuser so you will have the full control over your light this is a technique that I really love to use mostly because it's great and once you have everything like that you can even change the outliner come to select your plane let's duplicate the plane and this is the light rig number one and what I'm going to do is to select the plane and to put it inside of the group now each time that I move my light it's going to move accordingly with the diffuser aiming towards the point so it's going to be always with the nice diffuse light and if I want to have a bigger diffuse light here I can just change the position and if I want to have a bigger reflection there I can just change the reflection around the bottle I think I did like how this one looks being thicker so you just need to select your light and your reflection is going to be always there this is a photographical method because normally you when you take a photograph from a product shot you usually do work with diffusers even for jewelry we are going to see some jewelry techniques at a later stage when we are going to do work with soft boxes around the full square and the result is something like this now the part that it's amazing to work like this is that you have soft reflections in an environment where you actually do have a fully reflective object so I can just punch my reflection up to be perfect reflections and I will always have these nice kind of softer reflections even when I know that I have sharp and cut reflections on the borders and you can see it here we have sharp reflections of the planes and if I put the texture here you can see the squares and everything because we do have sharp reflections and we have diffusers applied to the lights I prefer to work this way for, for product shots even for some shots that are not product shots I do like to work like this the only problem that you're going to see 
it's this the that you are going to use the light let me show you uh, I will add some AOBs for you to see the result if you have your basic AOBs let's see the global illumination raw global illumination it's okay and let's put the direct lighting diffuse filter diffuse lighting and we render this guy you're going to be able to see that the light is not there you can see the light from the left part but you're not going to be able to see the light from the right part and why is that because the right part it's passing towards the GI so low illumination raw maybe let's see nope where it's subsurface is current total diffuse lighting let's see where the light is on redshift total diffuse again we don't have light there hmm. interesting diffuse lighting emission it shouldn't be emission reflections are not going to be reflection I doubt Translucency, here is where the light should be. Yeah, diffuse filter, no, it doesn't have the light. Where is the light? This is interesting. Let's bring up the lighting. I think that it's actually on the diffuse light let's see let's bring the light to a red value and I think that I'm not seeing the light around here no I do have some influence so let's put 500 you can see just a tiny bit of tint pass here let's see and the pixel information oh it's black hmm. let's add a minor I think that the light it's not passing through so to make the light pass through I will need to add a subsurface scattering effect. Let's see, I've sub absorption of 0.1, scale of 0.1, 2, 5. Interesting. Apparently, the light is not passing through the object. Let's take it closer. But I can see it here. But it's the reflection, I think. But not the light itself. So I'm not going to have light contamination if I do not have reflection. Ah. It shouldn't. Okay, let me do some tests. I will be back in a minute. Okay, now apparently it's working when we have some kind of reflection, as I thought. And if I take the reflection out, we are not going to have any type of influence from the transmitted light. If I want to have some kind of influence, I will need to put the same map into some emission here maybe let's see we have the emission part and if I take my ramp into the material and I put it on the emission 
let's reduce the amount of reflection on the plane no I do not have any emission there so it's quite interesting to see that we do not have anything there maybe because we don't have GI <laughs> that's why I thought that I had GI on so it was because of the GI now that's why I didn't have any GI over there that was so amazing that's a noob error but well it can happen now let's try to fix this guy because I broke it well you know that we have some live tutorial so it can happen now we have a lot of GI things let's see let's render this guy and we are going to have some noise because we are adding the light by the GI and some basic GI there oh I remove everything so let's put the brute force bounces at 5 and the number of rave to 512 uh, brute force and brute force and now let's add the AOVs again so it will be the diffuse lighting and the global illumination the ones that I choose at the beginning you can see that now we have less noise here but again we do have noise so we are going to pump up that values and over here I have max samples really low samples so no worries and the diffuse lighting has this value and the GI lighting has the other value now it's working as it should so you can see now that the diffuse lighting has the direct light but the light that is being passed through the diffuser it's being accounted as GI and not as a regular light so you need to take that into account when you are going to control your lights because it's not that easy to control the light via GI and now the light is extremely hot maybe 100 was the value that I was using at the beginning yeah we, you can see the light now and you can see that the render times are higher way higher than user than using uh, soft boxes as textures when you use the real setup the light is going to pass through the object is going to be scattered away by the diffuser and it's going to collide with the diffuser to be able to get into the light so it's going to work something like this you have the light there right the light it's going to be emitted by a really really nice light that I have here that I have to change the position also and the diffuser it's going to get the light and it's going to diffuse the light in all directions and being that that's a lot of light that it's also been redirect to the other towards the other side so each of these steps are bounces and after that it's going to bounce back and it's going to bounce back so it's going to add a lot of noise because we are going to lose a lot of information that's how the shadows get softer because we have a light that it's going to be diffuser and the result it's going to look great but the light is going to look weird sometimes so let's try to whoa it's not working because we have a different scale here so reset tool uh, to work no it's not working maybe because the aim well I will fix that later or yeah I will fix, fix that later I do like how it's looking right now so we have our texture here we have the light working and let's hide this part now we need to add the diffuser to the second part that is going to be this one here I created a second diffuser around here I'm going to put my beautiful beautiful light on a spot that it's quite direct to make uh, a better position of the, as the one that I had there so this one it's okay the scale should be backwards so let's freeze transformation 
and scale it inwards here you can see that now we have just the diffuser working over there the light is working now and I'm going to select both I'm going to make this one smaller I'm going to position this one closer around here and this one is going to be just on the front I need to put it in a similar position the rotation should be almost the same as the one that I have here to fix the error that I have there because I have the aim and now let's adjust this one to be inside of this group that way it's going to move with the light when I select the light and now I have a new diffuser that is going to be around here that's going to be the big bright diffuser this one is going to be the not that big diffuser so let's go again with the light let's put a value of 10 maybe a value of 15 and I think that I like it I like how the light is looking at the moment and if I come here and take my glass and make it as a glass around you can see that the result is great and what we can achieve here is that we have a new kind of look this look it's that when you're working on a product shot you need to define what's important to work on and I'm referring mostly to the product it's the content the more important part of the product shot if it is the content then the bottle is not that important and some shots that you can see over the internet you can see that the bottle doesn't have nice reflections uh, the guys are not taking care of let's bring up to 512 and to 0 0.5 on the adaptive error threshold to take the noise away and if you see some product shots you're going to be able to see that some people tend to render the images with a basic setup and they just, they just remove the professional part of the product shot out why? because the light setups are not enough to make it look good when you're working on a product shot you need to be sure that you have the correct setup to see the right reflections on the objects and what's really important there you need to decide if the whole product is important or if just a part of it is important let's say a bottle of wine in a bottle of wine the wine itself is not important what it's really important it's the liquid of a bottle of wine and the label so you need to make them pop and the wine it's just a minor kind of little tint that you have on the neck of the bottle and maybe some caustics on the bottle on the bottom of the bottle for a coke bottle you have a lot of information because with a coke bottle even the bottle is patented you know from the shape from the silhouette of the bottle that it's a coke bottle so we have both parts important here the content that is the liquid the refractions and everything and also the bottle itself if we just put some basic uh, hard reflections you're going to see that the light is there but you saw it at the beginning the reflection was not that great uh, we lost some values around the, the edges and it's not that amazing we need to have that information and we need to have that kind of feeling that the bottle is there that we have physical reflections and that the object it's uh it's more physical you need to feel that it's uh i don't know that it has the feeling to be touched or that you need to touch it that's the deal and the secret for a product shot also you can see here that now we have some nice refractions of blacks if you remember the guide that we were working we had that kind of black refractions over the bottle 
and that's what gives us realism. The environment itself makes a lot of refractions into the bottles to catch to catch the attention of the the public. So when you're working on a scene, normally when you're working on a product shot, you can even add an HDRI that emits no light, just an environment to add more information to the refractions. It could be a hangar, it could be some window, it could be something that you need to have on the reflections, on the refractions to add more believable information. It could be the model of the camera, it could be a lot of things that normally photographers tend to try to remove, but they always catch something into the refractions. And that's going to help a lot to get the final feeling of the actual render. So you can see that we have a really, really nice refraction around here and the reflections look great. And also this is not the final lighting setup. We need to change some parts and to add information for the refractions. And that's the great part that we have on 3D because we can do things that we cannot do on the physical studio. Also, let's save this scene here for a moment. So you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to add a black sphere around everything. And I'm going to put a black noise. So I'm going to add uh, maybe a checker. And on the UV coordinates, I'm going to add a noise here. Offset repeat noise. But I want to have less repetitions. So it's going to be just a basic color. And I want the colors to be duller. Something like that. So just to have some minor variations. The shot cam is inside. So now let's try to reproduce the render. So you can see here that we have more values around the borders that tend to have and to catch part of that information. You can see it there. And how it compares to the one that we are working now. That we do have more kind of subtle information around the edges that are part of that environment that has some minor noise and it helps us also with the refractions and the bounces of GI. I will add at a later stage some part of um, HDRI without emission as an environment to grab the final details of attention there. So thank you for following the tutorial and the material done, uh, think about it at the moment, we are still working on the light system, so the material is not a problem right now. So see you on the next lesson.